What if I told you there was a substance already in your body that if you could increase its levels high enough, you would be immune to obesity and metabolic syndrome? Sounds ridiculous, but that is the exact result that was obtained in transgenic mice altered so their body never broke down inositol over time. Inositol is a nutrient most people are deficient in today compared to just a few decades ago that has been promoted for fat loss since the 70s. There is something to that it has been shown to increase mitochondrial activity in fat cells, helping to turn white fat cells into so-called brown fat cells or beige adipose tissues in these transgenic mouse experiments. Mainly though, it's good for your liver, which is more important than you may realize. It's also a cancer fighter and an aid to health in the brain. The most mysterious organ of all. Tonight, we enter the dimly lit regions of the human mind. <laughs> Who knows what secrets are stored inside this organ? Who knows? Hey, look, a quarter. Finders keepers. <laughs> I used to take a supplement that combined choline together with inositol before they stopped selling it. Choline is very interesting too, but today I want to talk about inositol. Inositol is made in the kidneys and liver, and if you eat liver regularly, one of the important nutrients you get from liver is myo-inositol. Very few people today eat kidney or brain, but the levels are even higher in these organs. There's some in other foods, including some plant foods like beans, but the amounts are pretty much negligible compared to what we ate ancestral and the amount shown in studies to cause improvement. That's unfortunate because inositol has many benefits, including benefits for both depression and cancer, which should make anyone feel more optimistic. Tell me, what's the difference between an optimist and a pessimist? An optimist says the drink is half full. A pessimist says the drink is half full, but I might have bowel cancer. Whoa! There's a theory that if you have a weak organ, like a weak liver, then eating that organ meat will improve your health. That's definitely the case here with liver because liver has lots of inositol in it. And this is a very important nutrient for the liver. When you hear the phrase metabolic health, you should always think liver health. It's your liver that takes in glucose and fructose from the blood, and it's your liver that shoots out glucose into the blood too. When it's working properly, you're insulin sensitive. When it becomes damaged, it can't take in as much glucose anymore, and it also can't make ketones, and eventually you get type 2 diabetes. While a glucose tolerance test is not an insulin sensitivity test because hormonal changes on a low carb diet can alter the results, an ALT enzyme test is a very good insulin sensitivity test. The lower it is, the better. You can also take a craft test, but it's time consuming, expensive, and convoluted. Thankfully, once you understand it is your liver that's the key and how to take care of it, you shouldn't have to worry about it too much. It's also the liver that cleans up homocysteine in the body, and homocysteine increases heart disease and cancer. Inositol supplementation has been shown to help the liver get rid of this harmful metabolic byproduct, and that's very good news. In general, while inositol won't burn huge amounts of fat directly, it will increase the body's ability to be insulin sensitive and it will increase the fat burning capacity in cells, which reduces the damaging effects of the carb burning within cells. It's also shown in genetically altered mice that don't break down inositol over time, that they're essentially immune to obesity due to overeating, and they have increased mitochondria in their fat cells that are constantly burning fat. Inositol is also important for cleaning up the reactive oxygen species from energy metabolism, which is one of the main drivers of aging. Inositol also lowers blood glucose and undoes a lot of the damage of type 2 diabetes. 
At the same time, inositol is a delicate crystalline molecule and it's easily damaged by high blood glucose and also made less bioavailable. And cooking is also going to cause issues. So you may think you can get a bunch of it from beans, but in reality, you can't. So while it can reduce the bad effects of a high carb diet, even more is going to be needed if your diet is not under control because it's going to be destroyed very quickly within the body. Inositol is also important for blood pressure and four grams a day can reduce blood pressure to a similar level to many blood pressure medication. In short, it's going to help a great deal with metabolic syndrome. And this is why. And this is just another way of saying what Newberg said, okay, that, but Coca-Cola said it in their words. Everybody remember the coming together campaign of Coca-Cola back in 2013? It was played on every football game the entire year. And this is a direct quote. Beating obesity will take action by all of us based on one simple common sense fact. All calories count no matter where they come from, including Coca-Cola and everything else with calories. In other words, calories are fungible. Doesn't matter where they come from. They all enter one big engine and the engine burns them exactly the same way no matter where they come from. And therefore, why pick on our calories? Go pick on somebody else's calories. This was their method for assuaging their culpability. So they say it's about calories. They say it about, it's about obesity, is it? I'm going to give you five separate reasons why this is not true. Here's one. Here is a scattergram of all the countries in the world obesity prevalence on the x-axis, diabetes prevalence on the y-axis, and you would look at this and you would say, well, very clearly, Dr. Lessig, there's a correlation, and there is. Agreed, there is a correlation. But correlation is not concordance, they're not the same. Because there are countries that are obese without being diabetic, such as Iceland, Mongolia, Micronesia, and there are countries that are diabetic without being obese, such as India, Pakistan, and China. India and China today have an 11% diabetes rate, and they're not fat. We are the fattest nation in the world, have a 9.4% diabetes rate. If diabetes is just a manifestation of obesity, how come they have more diabetes than we do? Problem number one. Problem number two. Obesity is increasing worldwide at the amortized rate of 2.78% per year, yet diabetes is increasing worldwide at the rate of 4.07% per year. If diabetes is just a subset of the larger subgroup of obese individuals, how come it's going up faster? Inositol is very helpful for women in all stages of life. PCOS, for example, is largely a disease of insulin resistance. And inositol is very helpful in bringing back fertility for women who have this issue. As women age, they make less estrogen, and the estrogen they do make is of a different type that degrades into harmful metabolites. This is natural, but since less is made, it also clears out less quickly. And this is where the problem comes in. These harmful cancer-causing metabolites from this form of estrogen tend to accumulate, and they can cause cancer like breast cancer and ovarian cancer in particular. Inositol is kind of like a supercharger for the liver that allows it to very quickly clear out these bad forms of estrogen that cause all this damage. This is going to not only make you feel better, but also reduce the chance of developing these sex hormone related cancers. It also has some general anti-cancer properties such as reducing inflammation and impeding cancer growth pathways. And it's also used as a sort of adjunct to cancer therapy to undo some of the bad effects of cancer therapy. Generally, the type of inositol taken does not matter much nutritionally, but for this purpose, it seems that inositol hexaphosphate is preferred for some reason. In addition to women's health, it also helps with men's health. In fact, it helps with everyone's health because it's required to make all sex hormones and also to keep thyroid levels in the proper range. It helps men even more because not only does it increase testosterone levels, but also reduces excessive estrogen, making men be all they can be. Seems like a real ladies man. Hey, can, can, we, can we get a little closer on this picture of Cole? Maybe push in on his groinal area? Are you seeing something you like down there, Bartowski? 
Our ancestors always ate the whole animal when we hunted, and this includes the brain. Without it, we are missing out on vital nutrients, and brains are jam-packed with inositol. Clearly, it must be used for something, right? Inositol is involved in cell growth, including the formation of connections in the brain. It's also important for neurosignaling and cellular energy production, so it is an important chemical for neuronal health. Your own brain makes large amounts of inositol, but these levels tend to decline with age. As it turns out, inositol can help a great deal with anxiety, including the dreaded panic attacks that some people suffer from. My aunt used to suffer from these attacks, and it often literally feels like you're having a heart attack and dying. And lots of people go to the emergency room for these panic attacks, thinking that they are going to. Surprisingly, inositol is shown experimentally to work better for panic attacks than anxiety med treatment, and it is better to avoid taking anxiety meds if at all possible, because they're very harmful to your brain. Inositol is also promoted as a sleep aid, but I didn't notice any change in sleep while taking it, and it seems to require a very high dose to actually put you to sleep. On the other hand, some studies show that sleep quality is improved, which makes sense as this is largely driven by the liver, not just the brain. It also seems to help with depression and OCD to some degree, though I wouldn't expect miracles here and the results are not overwhelming. Inositol is also helpful in dementia, including Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Children of less than average height given inositol, B12, and lysine in an experiment grew taller than those who did not have the supplement. So it's useful for all stages of life. And above all, it's particularly good for reducing the frequency and severity of panic attacks, no matter what's going on in your life. Holy underwear! We've got to protect our phony baloney job, gentlemen. We must do something about this immediately, immediately, immediately. Harumph, 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 harumph. Uh, gentlemen, please rest your sphincters. Like taurine and glycine, inositol is a nutrient that was once abundant in our diet, but is highly lacking in the modern diet. If you eat organ meats like kidney or brain regularly, you'll get a large amount of inositol in your diet. Liver also has quite a bit Otherwise, while it exists in many foods at low levels, your diet is very deficient compared to what we ate just a century ago in the Western world, especially since it's very sensitive to both heat and sugar exposure. This is made worse because it is depleted inside of your body by high blood glucose, which completely destroys it. Inositol plays a part in cellular metabolism and cleaning up ROS, Seems to be a very important part, though it's not completely understood at this point. It's required for creating sex hormones and for thyroid hormone. It removes cancer-causing hormonal metabolites caused by menopause, reduces insulin resistance by improving liver health, reduces homocysteine, helps prevent cancer, and even slows or stops the spread of cancer by directly impeding its actions. It's also highly important in the brain and can help with sleep quality by affecting both the brain and the liver. It also helps with depression, OCD, and dementia. However, I would say some of its effects in the brain are not extremely strong and many of them seem to require a very high kind of impractical dose like 12 to 18 grams. I take 1500 milligrams of inositol per day currently. But many studies suggest 3 grams or even up to 18 grams, depending on why you're taking it. The one I take is linked in the description along with doses of most of my current supplements. It's much cheaper in powder form, and virtually everyone is deficient compared to an ancestral diet. Since it's very important to many systems in the body, everyone should probably take a little extra if they can. However, some people are much more in need of it than others. This includes people with liver issues, women who are postmenopausal or who are heading in that direction, women with PCOS or anyone with high blood sugar or high blood pressure, in which case a larger dose of 3 grams or more is probably a good idea. 
and it's especially important for anyone with panic attacks. Trying it is a no-brainer for them and just play with the dose and see what happens. It's also been speculated that inositol browns adipose tissue, making it into so-called beige fat cells that are more metabolically active than white fat cells. This is borne out by transgenic rodent experiments where this created mice that were absolutely immune to obesity, so this claim should not be taken lightly. On top of all this, it is also shown to improve stem cell health in experiments with transgenic mice. For everything it does, it should cost a thousand dollars, but you can get it for pennies a day. He's gonna give away a thousand dollars. You're going to get a thousand dollars. He just gave you a thousand dollars. Count it up. Someone's going to get a punch in the head. Who do you think's going to get a punch in the head?